right oval fans. Um, this was possibly the worst episode of the season so far. I don't even know what to say. On the positive side, it was during this episode, I want to say, yeah, during the last three minutes that the channel officially hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you all for, so much for that. And I'll be doing like a either a live stream or a separate video, you know, kind of going over the thrill of hitting that number after so many, you know, months. I, it only been like two years. I want to say years, but like it's only been two. But um that's probably the only happy thing to mention in this episode. I hated the fact that this is the episode before a more or less three week hiatus because I feel like th this show and I'm going to be doing videos going over the Oval and Sisters since we officially have a, a hiatus. Now I can really think about things about the show. I can just kind of talk and speak what I have to say about it. I know I'm kind of talking in circles here, but this episode really put me in a weird place. Um, there were several times during the episode where I kind of blanked out because nothing was happening. I was doing my, okay, I, I got the show on my TV. I'm tweeting live. I'm writing my notes, but then I'm also checking my subscriber number because it was within the last 15 people to hit 100,000 and I was on the phone with my sister and before you're like Jeremy well how do you how can you say it was a terrible episode when your attention was clearly divided on like half a dozen other things I rewatched the episode this morning and then the notes I took last night were extremely accurate so me not giving the show my full attention made no difference this was a god awful episode okay um the episode started off great Richard overheard Gail's assault because he actually um, goes up to the, I believe this was the same guy from the previous episode who was giving Richard, you know, lip, I guess it's the best way to put it, when he was looking for Barry. But then Piggy came out there and confronted him like, yo, yo, that's my uncle, be cool. And then he goes up to him again saying, I'm looking for my son. But then Richard, like, you know, just tossed him aside when he hears the noise from around the corner. Then he fends off like what, almost half a dozen guys, even to do one gun and saves Gail. And I really liked how the episode went to the logo when he got to the uh, truck, you know, and made sure the girl was able to stand up. And then he real and they realized who the other person was. Then we get the title sequence. I'm like, okay, okay, this is some good stuff. I like what we're doing here. Because I'm like, okay, I really can't wait to see how this is going to elevate from Richard saving Gail to Gail leaping out of the limo. But no, we get my least favorite plot of the story so far, Bobby and Lily. Guys, again, this is not a stab at the actors. No, 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 no. I'm talking specifically about this storyline. I do not care. Bobby's into Lily. Lily is suspicious about the whole thing, rightfully so. But she, she has to admit that things aren't adding up. You know, it just seems way too coincidental for this not to be some kind of chance meeting. Someone organized this, but Bobby is unsure about who set all this up. Lily had been marked. It could be sabotaged from her husband. Who the hell knows? He gives her a burner phone to contact him if she needs it. Then he ends up leaving. She's like, I'll shoot you again if you ever come back. And that's it. That's honestly it. Uh, then we go over to Max and Denise. They're still sitting in the vehicle. Uh, her phone is blocked, or excuse me, her phone has been scrambled. She doesn't want to be there or have anything to do with Hunter. And um, apparently, like, street cameras were put outside of her store, and she suspects that that's only because she wanted, uh, excuse me, that's because on that's only because Hunter wants her to be watched. And Hunter gives a call about, you know, updates on what's going on. And uh, then they end up going to the White House later on in the episode. So the first 10 minutes of this episode, except for the first scene with Richard and Gail, extremely boring and dragged out, in my opinion. Then we go back to Richard and Gail. Uh, Nancy calls Richard about the whole, hey, this girl from the Colts here, have you found Barry? Then Richard's like, hey, you know, um, I'll be home soon. I got a lot on my plate right now. And tell that girl not to leave. And I'm thinking the entire time, you know, 
I'm not one for really agreeing with helping this girl, but could someone at least try to tend to her bruises and whatnot? That way she's not bleeding out everywhere because her face is pretty banged up. So that's all I'm saying. Uh, then we go back to the White House with Jason, Richard, and Victoria, and Donald shows up, you know, um, pretty much getting a recap over the whole situation with Gail, and tensions flare up within the family because Jason's like, oh, okay, so you resent us, you didn't want us, huh? And then that leads to some tension, and we get Jason doing a pseudo wide impression, telling his parents to go to hell before he gets sent to his room. And then, you know, the subject of Max comes up. And Max, poor Max is just being thrown under the bus. Yeah, he's like the head of security and whatnot. But guess what? He's out running Hunter's whore. Now, I'm not calling Denise a whore because that's Victoria's job. His whore errands. And that's why Max wasn't there when Gail escaped the White House. So Hunter not admitting to what Max is doing is really just throwing Max under the bus. So... Victoria asks about the whole butler situation and then walks off, which is very baffling to me. But I will talk about that towards the end of the video and its own separate video itself. Uh, so then we go back to Gail and Richard. And uh, this is Gail's giving him attitude and then still denying the fact that, um, you know, Barry, you know, assaulted her and everything. And. <sighs> Then he gives a call to Sam about the situation, saying that he'll bring Gail back to the White House. And at first, I don't really know why Sam told Richard not to come back, but it actually does make sense because of the whole situation involving uh, the whole, well, oh, okay. You lose your job because your son assaulted the first daughter, but then you find the first daughter who left the White House, and now she's all banged up like this. So I will admit, that was a... Smart move by Sam to have Richard stay put and then Gail to be picked up. So I do agree with that decision. And I'm just going to kind of skip one scene to just continue the Gail and Richard situation. This was a very good discussion. I love the fact that Gail brought up the Emmett Till, which shows that she did the research Priscilla brought up. And I don't really agree with Gail getting a cigarette from Richard because isn't she supposed to be 16? But given the fact that Richard has seen her drunk and then the fact that she's hanging around this bad neighborhood, eh. She did need something to de-stress, I suppose. Again, I don't really support the cigarette, but at the same time, you know, she was, you know, hitting on some things to get high earlier in the episode. But Richard just understood that Gail needed something to help even her out, so to speak. So I did like the fact that he was talking about how so many people want to be special. You might not want to be in the position you're in, but if you make the most of it, you can really make something out of yourself, you know? So... I did like that conversation about like trusting the White House staff. Like these are people who will put their lives on the line for you. So just give it a chance. So I really hope the proof will be in the pudding the next time we see Gail interacting with someone like Priscilla, for example. So I'm not saying this is going to be a transformation over the course of one episode because that's bad character development. But if we gradually see Gail beginning to show a little bit of kindness towards the White House staff, despite the fact that she despised her parents, I would like that a lot, and we shall see what really happens as time goes on. And I skipped the scene, but I'm going back. Like I said, Barry comes home. Nancy chews him out about his attitude. And then Nancy's saying that her and Richard need to talk with Barry. And this, this, how did Nancy go from having my favorite Nancy scene in the last episode where she's talking with Sharon to being one of the most nagging characters in this episode? So... Yeah, she's still under the suspicion about Barry killing Ruth. And then Barry sees that cult member who thinks is, you know, at first thinks it's Ruth. And like, no, no, I saw you at Ruth. And then he's like, oh, opening the damn door for everybody. So I will admit, you know, he is angry for the right reason. But in Nancy's defense, Tally broke in herself. So basically, Nancy slaps him. He goes upstairs. I mean, he even goes off on Sharon beforehand about her wanting to, her leaving. But Nancy doesn't want her to leave. Barry's like, fine, and she stays, and I'm going, so he goes upstairs, and, um, yeah, so, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I actually skipped this part of the Gail Richard conversation, she's still denying the fact that, you know, Barry did what he did, so she's still going on in line, it's like, well, I can have you fired, and he, I love the fact that Richard's laughing, well, too late for that little girl, you're fired, well, it's, this episode made no sense, 
why would Gail threaten to have Richard fired when she was sitting at the... Bre Wait, wasn't she sitting at the breakfast table when Richard got fired? Because I know Richard came in and Hunter had him fired. Well, no, no. Didn't Gail come to breakfast late? Because I know um, Jason was there with his parents, but I think Richard may have come in later. I could be wrong about that because it's been a few weeks since that episode aired. But in any case... If she was in attendance when Richard got fired, why would she say, I'll have you fired? If I'm wrong, then I, I apologize for that like 60 second, you know, buffer because I could be wrong. But I don't remember for sure if Gail was at. I know she came to breakfast late, but I know Richard got fired at breakfast. So that's all I got to say on that. Um, Let's see. Yeah, Secret Service comes and picks her up. And I was hoping that Victoria would have seen Richard there and given him the job back on the spot. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. But like I said, I'll get to that later in the video. Uh, Barry's packing up. Sharon goes to comfort um, her. Comfort him, I'm sorry. But then he confronts her about the whole drug allegations, if you will, that Picky told him about. Sharon did not deny it. So there could be some truth about her and Kareem. All she's worried about is Barry in the moment. And he's like, hey, 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 it feels like I'm alone. There's nobody that cares about my daughter but me. But she reassures him that we all care and you're understandably upset. But at the same time, you need to calm down because you're not helping anyone acting the way you are. Nancy comes in, they have a group hug, and then we switch back over to Donald and Hunter. They talk about Max once again and how Kyle's going to be the supervisor because Max is new and the White House has its own protocols, yada, yada, yada. Um... Gail's, yeah, they talk about Gail being found, and because, yeah, yeah, Donald's calling Kyle about the situation, tells Kyle to go back to the location where Gail was picked up to get her phone, and take care of any goons who get in the way. Uh, Denise and Hunter have a scene in the Oval once again, she doesn't want to be there, he flaunts his power to her, caresses her, apparently he bought her to store, and he gives her some name, like, was it JJ and Callan, so is this like a gambling thing or whatever, because she has about $30,000, and he's about to make her rich based off the information that she was just given, then they have sex. Then we go to Donald and Max. Donald and Max have a talk about the whole situation involving Kyle being the supervisor and Max not being fired, but kind of de de put into training is the best way to put it. And uh, and if Kyle gives him any crap, just come to me and I'll take care of it. So Max, you know, yeah, he's going to be supervised by his antagonist since he got his job. So another thing I have a question about. When Victoria saw Max in front of the oval door, and wanted to get in, but he was protecting it because Hunter and Denise were in there. And Victoria was screaming and banging on the walls and whatnot. Max said it's soundproof so they can't hear us. And let me know if I'm wrong because I did try to Google this and look it up. I couldn't find anything. So if a room is soundproof, doesn't that mean that not only can you not hear what's going on on the inside? Oh, excuse me. Not only are the people on the inside of the room unable to hear what's going on on the outside but isn't that also how it works both ways where you can't hear what's going on on the inside because if that's the case how come donald and max were able to hear denise moaning and groaning on the inside let me know if i'm wrong because again that's like a huge continuity issue um then we have richard driving through a protest justice from thomas fields the Deacon that was shot, you know, in the middle of the morning, like middle of the day through his window, which was possibly from the gunshot Richard and Barry made when they were fighting over the gun in his car. And all I got to say is, dude, why are you banging on his truck? He's just driving by. He's just trying to get through. He doesn't know what's going on. Damn, this is how people get run over in these protests. My gosh. Um, then we go to the limo scene and Victoria is asking for a taser, asking for a gun. And then the security's like, no, we're not, no, we're, no, we're not doing that. And then next thing you know, Gail threatens to jump out of the car. Victoria's doing her makeup and Gail just jumps out of the limo. And that's the end of that. So this episode was not good at all. I mean, the only good scenes were between Gail and Richard, in my opinion, I feel like there's some continuity issues that make no sense in the show so far. Like, I'm tired of Nancy thinking Barry killed Rue because, once again, Nancy had a knife when she was trying to protect Callie from being abducted, but then the cult members held her down, then took the knife. 
So isn't that knife the knife that's missing? And that's the one she thinks that Barry used to stab Ruth with? Then once again, I just mentioned the whole soundproof room thing. Like, I really thought that a soundproof room is where you can't hear what's going on on the inside, just as if the inside people can't hear what's going on on the outside. Then going back to the butler situation, Victoria mentioned the butler, but didn't she tell Richard minutes after Richard was fired? Well, excuse me. Didn't she tell Hunter minutes after he fired Richard at the breakfast table to hire him back immediately? Yet we have Richard being off work for what, one or two days now sitting at home cutting the grass and Nancy wondering what's wrong? Barry not getting his phone back? When is Barry going to change his clothes? He's been wearing the same stuff since what, like episode one, episode two, trying to find his daughter, throwing people around pharmacies, getting into fights, going to the police department? Then on top of that, Sharon not admitting to the whole situation about being involved with Kareem and selling drugs at the pharmacy that, well, are selling more than prescription drugs? And somebody did point this out in one of my videos where they said, well, in smaller pharmacies, there are typically only a couple of people in there. Okay, that actually makes sense. Because at the moment, it only seems like Kareem and Sharon are the only ones who work at the pharmacy. Also, when are we going to meet the vice president? Is there even a vice president? What's going on here? I get that this show is not about the politics and more about the people involved in the White House and their lives and whatnot outside of the White House itself. But when you introduce the first family, you could at least introduce the vice president because it only makes sense. So I'm guessing that if there's no vice president here, we're probably not going to get one in the haves and the have nots when it comes for Charles, you know, in his time approaching being in the White House himself. And like I said at the beginning, really don't give a damn about the whole Donald, Lily, Kyle, and Bobby storyline. Um, also, Denise and Hunter in the Oval Office. So did Hunter have it where the security cameras were turned off because Victoria literally said there are cameras everywhere. That's how I knew Denise was here. So are you going to bring her back knowing that Victoria will know if you brought her back? Literally, what's going on here? I can go on all day about the lack of continuity in Trust and believe in the haves and the have nots. I go off on that stuff too. Even if it's like season five and something is like retcon from season two, I will mention it and be mad about it. But at the same time, it's like, well, Tyler Perry is the only one writing the show and everything. So I'm mad about the lack of continuity, but it's semi understandable because these are seasons from years ago and he changed something years later. But when a show is not even 10 episodes in and there are some major plot holes retcons and lack of continuity it shows it shows in the worst way possible so kind of like sisters this was not a good episode i begrudgingly give it a four out of ten i was honestly going to give it like a two or a 3.5 but i did like the gail and richard scenes but i really do feel like if gail begins to gradually warm up to the white house staff i think that's better than her having an instant shift one episode later but I will like, I did like how she jumped out of the limo. It's like, this bitch is crazy. I'm just like, well, Victoria, your daughter takes after you. When she says she's going to do something, she does it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Yeah. So let me know your thoughts in the episode below. I mean, excuse me. Let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comment section below. This was not a good way to transition into a hiatus. Kind of like sisters. It's like to have two extremely lackluster episodes and then go on break and then be bold enough to have these shows come back the day after the haves and have nots in 2020. I could see some people falling off and just focusing on the haves and have nots instead, but we shall see. So if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Let me know, do you think I scored the episode too low? Did I score the episode too high? Do you agree with my score for 4 out of 10? And what do you think of the show so far?